What we do now is we get ready to put the, the cable in the duct. Open the duct, take our hockey puck out, put it back in our box so we can find it next time. Take our inner duct adapter out. Now you notice the inner duct adapters are in two pieces in case you don't have an end. If we're blowing from the middle of a reel somewhere, you'll need to get that cable in there. That's why we have this split. Here we have the end. Now we need to get the cable fitted with the right seals and venturis to send the cable down line. First thing we have to do is determine not the count of fiber that's in here, but the outside diameter of the cable so that we can determine what size seals are going to be used on this cable. The seals come in a various amount of packs, each one labeled a different diameter, like this one here happens to be a 049 to a 55. What we do is we find the seals, we find this the seal that fits over the cable snugly and seals around nice and snug. That there would be the, the seal that would fit. This one, you can see the gap around there, this would not be the proper seal. It's very important to get the one that fits snugly around the outside diameter of the cable. Be sure your seals are pointed, the pointed end towards the end of your cable, rather than the other way around, this would let the air escape. This does a, this traps the air in the venturi. Once we determine the size seal, that determine the outside diameter of the seal determines which venturi we use. So we find the venturi that fits snugly with the seal, and there we've got the correct venturi. We use two seals. The seam on the one seal will put down in the bottom of the venturi. The seam on the other seal will put towards the top of the venturi so that we don't have the seams lined up. Once we've got the seals lined up on the cable and we've got that through, now we can get ready to set the cable inside of the duct. Now this split tube we have here, we have this extended as close back to the tires as we can get so that the cable is rigid in between here. If we had too much of an area here we'd have a tendency to push the cable one way or the other. Once we get this in here, set our seals, a larger cable you can actually take this smaller tube out if it's the cable's too large to fit through this diameter, you take this little tube out. There's a little screw here. Then this larger hole here and the bigger cable won't need to be as close. To get that set in place, and we set our venturi down in our air block. Get the tube set in. We choose the right size Kellum grip to fit the cable. I like to stop the cable right on this type of Kellum grip. I like to stop the cable right inside of them guides there. That'll actually guide the nose of that cable through the duct, through the splices without getting caught. I'll usually tape this down here a little bit when we get ready to go. We choose the missile. This here is a missile that's designed to go in the inch and a quarter. This missile will fit firmly in this inch and a quarter duct so that it will trap the air in there so that we can use that to pull. We'll connect the Kellum grip with our clamp. 
I will take my electrical tape, bring these shoulders down. I don't want the tape hitting the edge of the duct. Plastic and plastic causes drag, but I don't want the quarters of this Kellum grip to catch the seams and the splices. You'll see there the shoulders are going to ride through them splices rather than getting caught on the edge. We'll get some on the back end of our Kellum grip. We know it won't slip off of the cable. Now that we've got this done, the next thing I want to do is finish putting in our lubricant. I like to put in the rest of the other quart and put in one more quart of lubricant in front of my missile. Start my missile down my inner duct. Okay. Once I get my missile started down in there, I'm going to put the remainder of my lube behind the missile so that the cable gets some lubricant on it so it can drag through there and help with the static. Put my inner duct adapter on. Screw it back into place. Once we have it locked in, get our seals and everything down where they belong, get everything in place, close the lid on our tube, Shut her down. Now we've got our cable down through here. The next thing I want to do is take this new adjustable cable guide we have and guide this cable directly into the center of them tires. Not too tight, a little slack. Now we've got that guided right in the middle. We got this adjusted so the cable comes straight into our tube. Now, with our tire, what we want to do is we want just enough pressure on this top tire to come down around the cable without touching the two tires together. We're going to power the bottom tire. The cable is going to turn the top tire. We run about eight pounds of air pressure in these tires. That enables us to wrap around the cable without putting a flat spot in there and gives us a little bit better traction. If you run more air pressure than that, you would have a tendency to flatten the cable rather than to wrap around it. One of the most important things we need to do when we get in these reels ready to go on here, we've got a greaser on the bushing. What we want to do is be sure to get some lubricant between the, the bushing and the arbor to allow that reel to fin, spin freely. One of the tricks we've learned is with a uh, paint marker or a valve stem marker from a tire shop, we can put marks on our tires periodically so that we can tell when they're turning. We know that the cable's turning the top tire, the hydraulic motor's turning the bottom one, our goal is to keep them turning at the same speed. So the paint marker is a handy little tool. 